Welcome to our Luft online video seminar. Today's topic will be the use of the UMB config tool together with the UMB sensor. In our example, a WS600. First of all, I want to show you the hardware which you need to use the UMB config tool. In our example, we have, a, of course, a power supply. We have an isocon to connect together via RS-232 to the PC, for example. And, of course, we have our WS-600 sensor, which is only example. You can use any kind of UMB sensors for this uh, little seminar. So, now I want to show you how to install the UMB config tool, of course. Uh, first of all, you need to go to www.luft.com. I will do that now. And using the English version, of course, you will have the button support. Click on support. Then you have the button downloads on the left side. Then you click on software and then you have the possibility to choose UMB technology. And in the second row you will have software UMB config tool and you can download it. Of course you can install it. <clears throat> so now you will have the exe file and you can click on the exe and automatically it will start to install the software. Of course, you will be asked which language you want to use. In this case, we will use the English version. We'll install it. Only go to next, next. Everything will be done automatically, and then go to finish button. And then the software is installed on your PC. You will find it under programs, and you will have a folder called Luft UMB config. And if you open this, you will have the exe file for the config tool. And you can open it, and this is the main menu of the UMB config tool. After installing the UMB config tool, of course, the first step we want or we need to do is to check the communication. And we will do that with the edit button, and then you have the connection settings here. Now you can choose the right COM port which you use to communicate with the UMB sensor. Normally, in our case, it's COM1, so you can choose COM1 and say OK. That's it. You have a second possibility. You also can communicate via Ethernet. So that means if you want to do that, you would have to say use TCP IP. All right? After using TCP IP, you can also set or let's say configure the IP address and the port. Uh, which you need to use to communicate with the UMB sensor. So, that's it. Connection settings, use the right COM port, and that's it. So, the next step will be that we need to scan, the, of course, the UMB network, because the software, the UMB config, cannot know which kind of sensor is installed or connected to the PC. So, I will show you how to do it. So we have the first button here, edit, and then go to sensors, and that's the main menu. And now we have two ways to scan the network. The first way is an easy way to, uh, only you, the only thing you need to do is to strike the auto scan button here. Okay, auto scan. And then he, of course, wants to know the COM port, which is COM1 in our case, and then we'll start to scan the network. And you will see the bar with the uh, process and we will wait until 100% and after that normally the WS sensor should be in the list so we will see that <coughs> so here in the selected sensor list you have the WS sensor now and everything is okay so I want to show you the second way which is a, the manual way how to do that so you can do that also manually and we will delete the sensor first so if you start Again, the menu, you have the type of sensor list here, 
And in this list, you can choose different UMB sensors. In our case, we have a WS sensor. So choose WS X UMB and add it with the add button to the selected sensor list. And so that's the same thing. And if you want to control if the communication is really stable between the station and the uh, PC, for example, we have the verify button here at the bottom. And you can strike the verify button, and now you will get a verify OK back. And so the communication is stable, everything works. Go back with OK, and now we are in the main menu again. So, <clears throat> now we want to configure the sensor. You have the possibility to configure different things. For example, you can change the protocol, you can change the birth rate. Of course, you can also change the time for average, min, max uh, calculation. So I will show you how to go into the configuration menu. First, mark the sensor in the selected sensor list. Then you have a button called configure and strike the button. And now you're in the configuration menu. Of course, the first thing is we need to read out the configuration of the WS, for example, into the UMB config tool. For that, we have a uh, button called Load Profile from Sensor. And so we go to this button, and then he will load the profile from the sensor into the UMB config tool. Now we have three different buttons above. We have Main, Info, and WSX UMB. The info button is uh, important to know something about a serial number, article numbers, but I think the most important thing here is that you will see the actual firmware which is installed. It's called revision software. And here we will get the information which actual firmware is installed on the WS. And now we're going to the real configuration menu which is called WSX UME. And here you have different parts. The first part is the general properties, which are the same for all UMB sensors. And there you can change the ID of the sensor, and of course you can also edit the, uh, the description or something like that. The second part is the are the communication properties. Here you can change the line speed. You have different possibilities to change. The standard line speed is 90,200. Then, of course, you can also change the protocol. The standard protocol is UMB binary, but you can also change to Modbus, SDI 12, or UMB ASCII, for example. And you have also the timeout for protocol change. That means if you change the protocol for how long it will be in the same pro uh, protocol to go back to the standard protocol. That's the communication properties, and now we have the configuration menu of the WS itself called measurement setup here and we have different um, possibilities for example you can change temperature humidity uh, configuration you can you have the possibility to change the offset for example here for the offset for the temperature offset for the relative humidity you can change the interval for the calculation of min max average for both sensor types so that's for temperature and humidity and, for example, you can also switch off the fan if you want, yeah? or switch on, of course. So the next sensor is pressure. Also here you will have the possibility to change the offset. You can also change the interval, of course, the for min, max and average. And you have also to, the possibility to edit the height of the sensor, because normally you will have two pressures you can uh, have as a measurement value, the one is the first one is absolute pressure and the second one is the relative pressure. Absolute pressure is always calculated to zero Z level and the relative air pressure is calculated to the real height of the station. So if you want to do that you need to use the real height of the station which you can insert here in the altitude menu. Okay. So next measurement is the wind measurement and also here we have the offset for the wind uh, we have um, the heater mode, we have different heater modes for the wind measurement, we have of course automatic, we have mode 1, we have off and we have echo mode 1. So these are the possibilities to change the heater mode. Um, also the interval for min, max and average can be changed here and for the internal electric electronic compass we have also the local declination that means you need every place in the world has an own declination which you can 
of course, search for in, uh, in the internet. And normally to get the real compass value, uh, you need to insert this right local declination here. Then we have the rainfall settings. With the rainfall correction factor and the snowfall correction factor, you can um, change, let's say, the sensibility of the rainfall or the snowfall. Uh, if you go down from 1 is the standard configuration, if you go down from 1 to 0, it's more sensible. If you go up to 5, no, it's the other way around, it's not so sensible if you go from 1 to 0, and it's more sensible if you go from 1 to 5. The same for, thing for the snowfall. And of course, you will also have the possibility to change the heater mode for the rain here. You have also the four possibilities, automatic, mode 1, off, and echo mode 1. The last thing is the follow-up time precipitation type. Normally, this will always be the same time like you pull the station. For example, if you pull the station every 10 minutes, normally this time should be 600, because these are seconds, 600 seconds. The default settings is 120, but it means 2 minutes. But always use the same time as you pull the station. So the last menu will be energy management. And here you can set the WS in different modes. We have two modes. We have, let's say, the normal mode. Uh, if you have main power, for example, you can use the normal mode. Or you can also use power save mode, mode 1. And in this mode, all heaters and all fans are switched off. And so you can also use the WS600, for example, uh, solar powered. No problem. If you want to go back to factory settings, you, ha you have the button here, factory settings. And it will switch back to normal operation. So that's all for the configuration. So now, after you've done your configuration, of course, the first step is that you need to read back the configuration to the sensor. And this will be made on the main menu here. We have a new uh, button which is called Store Profile and Sensor. And of course, we need to do that because, of course, we need to, uh, let's say, uh, program what we have done on the PC side now into the UMB sensor. And we will strike the button and of course we will also see the, the bar which go up to 100% and after it will be 100% the new configuration is programmed on the WS sensor here. And you will also get a message that everything is programmed. So we are 90% now and you see the message is called config written to sensor and you strike the OK button and you can go to close and you will be back in the main menu. After, con after the configuration, of course, the next step will be that uh, we want to see some measurement values, right? And for that reason, we need to activate the channels we want to see. As you see here on the main screen, you will see the, uh, the table channels. And there you will have the number 116. So that means the WS uh, will give you 116 different channels you can have. So. But if you see the active channel list here, it's zero. That means no channel is activated. So what we need to do now is to activate the channels we want to see. And I will show you how to do that. You only click on, double click on the active channel button here. And then the list, the channel list will open with the 160 channels, of course. And now we will have the complete list and all are inactive here. You see, inactive on the right side. And now you can choose the right channels that you want to activate. For example, air temperature. You go to the inactive button, you click one time on the inactive button, it will be green, turned to active. And now it's active. We will, I will use four standard values now. Of course, you can choose any kind of uh, channel you want to have. I will also choose the dew point here. I will choose the humidity here. And for example, also the air pressure here. So after you have done your configuration of the channels, you go to OK, and you see now we have four active channels. And if you want to see these values now, we have to go to the Save and Exit button. Then you go to File and Start Measurement. And now you will see that the measurement will start with the four values we have configured. You can also change the polling rate here. Normally this is every five seconds. If you go to Edit, Sampling rate, you can choose between different poll times or sampling rates, let's say like that. 
So after checking the values, everything is okay. Uh, you can of course stop the measurement value or the, the, the measuring values, and we will do that with the file button here and go to stop measurement. We have also the possibility to store the complete measurement setup here. That means, for example, if you are on the station side and maybe you will return after two weeks, you don't need to do the complete uh, things again. You, that means you don't need to do the configuration and everything because you can store the measurement setup. And I will show you how to do that. Go to save and exit, go to file, and then you will have a button called store measurement setup. And if you go to this button, you can insert a name for the, for the station, for example, Luft Test 1, and then you say Store, File Saved, you say OK. Now you close this complete UMB config tool, for example, and you will be back after two weeks. So you can start again the config tool, go to File directly, and say Load Measurement Setup. Then you load it, you have to choose the right station, for example, Luft Test 1 and say open it. Now the station is open and if you go to edit sensors you will see that all the configuration are still there so you don't need to do that again. So you can directly go to the start measurement button and start the measurement again. So the last topic for the day is the firmware update. I want to show you how to do a firmware update because this is also possible uh, to be done with the UMB config tool. Of course you can visit every periodly our homepage and check for updates. If you have an update there you can download the update file and you can of course update this file with the UMB config tool. For that reason you have to go again to the selected sensor list with the uh, sensor you have installed and then you mark the sensor and go to firmware update sensor. Now the, uh, the first step is, it's only the first time, you need to say to the uh, UMB config tool where the hex load, which is the external program which uh, will do the update, is installed. Normally it's in the hex load folder, so you can open the folder and then you will see the hex load exe file. Then you click on the exe file and say open. And that's only necessary the first time on your PC. The second step now, he, he wants to use or know the path for the update file. So now you go to the firmware folder and choose the right firmware for the WS, for example, WS release version 2.8 for this in this case. You mark it and go to open. And after that, automatically the firmware update will start with the hex load program. And now you will see a window where you see the programming target status. And of course you have to wait on up to 100% and after that you will get a message that the firmware update is done. I will show you that now. So now we have reached 100% in a second and the next step is CRC status test and after that, after that you will get the message firmware update succeeded. And now the firmware update is done. So you can go or click on OK and you will be back in the main menu. So, thank you very much for your interest. Uh, we will have, of course, also other video seminars in the future from the Luft company with other sensors, with te techniques from Luft. Uh, and if you have additional questions, you can always send an email to uh, hotline at luft.de or support at luft.de. Thank you very much.